Today I'm going to show you how to set up an L2TP pre-shared key server. Now there's a lot of documents out there on the internet and a lot of videos. And unfortunately, none of them are comprehensive to cover every single different option. So we've got that here. So let's take a look. You see there's 10 steps. Let's see if we can uh, make this work for you in case you've been stuck and gotten bad information. The first thing we need to do is to port forward UDP traffic 1701, 500, 4500 to your internal server that's going to be your L2TP server. Now I'm going to do a separate video on this on how to do this with Cisco ASA firewalls. It's going to be similar for other firewalls as well. So if you already know how to do this, then that's the easy part. So let's go ahead and go on to step two and go to Active Directory and add dial-in permissions for our user. So we're going to go into our server, which we see is a domain controller called DC1. Now, these particular servers are virtual machines, but that doesn't matter. You can get this to work with physical or virtual, and I'm using Hyper-V. So let's go into Active Directory Users and Computers, and we're going to choose our user. In this case, we're just going to choose the administrator, but it doesn't have to be administrator uh, access. It could be anybody, but we just happen to have the administrators already created. So double click on that user, go to the dial in tab and change from control through NPS to allow and go ahead and click OK. All right, with that done, now we need to go to server manager and add the role for routing and remote access. So you go to add, remove roles, next going to stay with the role-based, feature-based installation. There's the name of our server. And from here, we're going to go to Remote Access. Click Next. 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 And only choose Direct Access and VPN. Go ahead and add the features when they pop up. Next, 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 and install. This usually takes a couple of minutes. We'll go ahead and fast forward for that. While we're waiting, let's take a look at our next step. We're on step four, configure routing and remote access and add static IPs. Adding static IPs is an optional thing. If you have a DHCP server, usually that will suffice, but I have seen on occasion where even with a DHCP server, it just doesn't know where to find that DHCP server from routing remote access, even if it's local to the server itself, and you end up having to add a static pool. So we'll go ahead and do that, but you could leave it at DHCP if you want, and I'll show you what that means in just a minute. All right, we are successful. Let's go ahead and close that. Go back to Tools. And now we're going to see a new option, Routing and Remote Access. We'll go ahead and select that. And now we're going to configure Routing and Remote Access simply by right-clicking on the server and choose Configure and Enable Routing and Remote Access. And we get a wizard that comes up. First thing we're going to do is click Next. We're going to choose the custom option at the bottom and choose next. We're going to only check the box that says VPN access. Uh, you do not want to check the NAT box because that's only if you have a network card facing the internet, which we do not. We have our server behind a firewall, so we only want VPN access. And finish. So that part is pretty easy. Go ahead and start the service. And we see now a little green arrow that says our service has started. Let's right click on that server and go to properties. From here, we're going to go to security. And we're going to check the box that says allow IPsec policy for L2TP and Ike V2 connection. Let's go ahead and put in the password we want to use. I'm just going to use the word password with a capital P and a zero, although I don't recommend that. This is just for testing purposes. Next thing we want to do is click on authentication methods, and you want to make sure that MS Chat version 2 is selected, and go ahead and click OK. 
And next thing you're going to do is IPv4. And this is where, if you have a DHCP server, you can just leave this alone. But if you do this and it doesn't work, come back in here and add an address pool. So I'm going to go ahead and add an address pool. And we'll just say 220. And as many IPs as you want. Uh, but I'm only going to do one. So we're going to do 221, which gives us two addresses. And then we're going to click Apply. And it says here, to enable the custom IPsec policy, you must restart routing and remote access. That's fine. Go ahead and click OK. Click OK. And restart. All right, let's move on to step five from our list, which is to edit, edit the network policy server. So we're going to, let's expand this off to the right here. And let's go ahead, right click and choose Launch Network Policy Server or NPS. And we see here that there are a couple of policies and they both have red X's on them. We want those to be green. So this is pretty easy. Just double click on each one and change from Deny Access to Grant Access. Click OK. Double click again and grant. Excellent. That's it. Step five is done. Now we need to go into regedit on both our client and our server and make a change. So we're going to start with the server since we're already in it. And we're going to type R-E-G-E-D-I-T. Now you may have to stop and pause to get to this spot. And uh, it's a little bit complicated, but if I go slowly enough with you and you have the pause button going, this shouldn't be too bad. All right, so we are on our Reg Edit program, and we're going to expand the local machine, H key local machine. And we're going to expand system. Then we're going to expand current control set. Then we're going to go to services. Now if you type the letter P, because we're going to go to policy agent, it'll take you down much quicker. So you don't have to scroll so far because there's a lot here. And we're going to go to policy agent. Now we're going to create a new key and it's kind of a long name so you're definitely going to want to pause here. We're going to right click and choose new D word. And you're going to want to type this exactly as you see it. So let me switch back to our other view, paste that in, and then I'll let you see that nice and close here. So take a look. Assume UDP encapsulation context on send rule. Now there's no spaces here. Every letter that's capitalized must be capitalized just the way you see it. So again, pause the video if you need to. And get that written down. Okay, now I'm going to double click on that new D word that we just did and I'm going to change the value to two. And I'm gonna click OK. All right, so what you can do is you can copy the name that we just did here because we're gonna use that same name in our Windows client. And we're gonna do this exact same thing. So let's switch over to the Windows client. And it's a Windows 10. And we're going to right click on the start menu and we're going to type reg edit. Now you'll need to be a member of the administrators group. So if you get a message saying you don't have the rights, log off and log back in as someone who has the highest rights. Okay, local machine again, the exact same place that, that we went to last time, system. And we're going to go to current control set. Then we're going to services. Type the letter P. Gets us down to policy much faster. And we're going to go to policy agent. And we're going to right click, choose new D word. And I'm going to paste that in. 
after I select it again. Okay, I've got it in there. I'm going to double click on it, change it to a 2, and click OK. And then I'm going to close our regedit. Next thing we're going to do on both the client and the server, we are going to make sure there's a couple of services running. So we're going to right click on the start button, go to run, and type in services.msc. Hit enter. And there's a couple of services we want to make sure are there. The first one is going to begin with an I, so you can go ahead and type the letter I and it'll take you to it. Now you can see here that it's set to manual. We're going to change that to automatic, apply, and start. Click OK. Next thing we want to do is the IP policy agent. If as long as it says it's running, it's fine, but change the startup to automatic. Let's go ahead and close that and minimize. And let's go back to our DC. And we will do the same thing. But we don't have to go to the run menu here if we don't want to. We can just go to tools and it'll take us to services. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go to the letter I. OK, Ike is running, so that's good. And IPsec is running. And that's manual, so let's go ahead and change that to automatic. Click OK. We are on to step eight, which is create a policy on both the server and the client to allow L2TP. So let's go ahead and do that. That only takes about a minute, not too bad. Let's start with our domain controller. We're going to right click on the start button, choose run, and type MMC, short for Microsoft Management Console. And we are going to go to the file menu and go add, remove, snap in. And we're going to look for a type of policy called IP security policy. It's going to be for the local computer. Click finish, click OK. And now we're going to right click on the policies and choose create IP security policy. Click next. We're going to call this one server because it's on the server, although it doesn't really matter. And we're going to activate the default response for earlier versions of Windows in case you have a Windows XP computer. And then we're going to go down to where it says use this string to protect the key exchange pre-shared key. And we're going to use the exact same password we used last time. And again, you can use whatever password you want. And then you can uncheck the edit property because we're done. And then you see here it says policy assigned. It's not assigned. So let's go ahead and right click and assign it. And then we're going to close. We don't need to save our settings. We're good there. And I'm going to go ahead and restart this. And then we're going to do the same thing on our client. So let's go to our Windows 10 client. Right click, go to run, type MMC, go to file, add, remove, snap in, and we're going to go to our IP security policy, local computer, click OK, create IP security policy, I'm going to call this one client since it's on the client. Check the box, change to use this string, put in password, next, and finish, and click OK. OK, you don't have to edit the properties. Everything here is good. All right, let's go ahead and close that. Don't need to save it. And let's go ahead and restart our client. Our Windows 10 computer is rebooted, but one thing I forgot to do was to assign the policy like I did on the server. So go back in and make sure that that's set to assign. All right, so now we are ready to go and create our L2TP connection. So we're going to want to go to Open Network and Sharing Center. And you can do that simply by right clicking on the little network connection in the bottom right hand corner and click Open Network and Sharing Center. It's also available through the control panel if you choose to go that route. 
All right, so now we're going to click on set up a new connection or network. And we're going to choose a VPN. Click next. I'm going to use my internet connection VPN. And we're going to put in the IP address. Now I'm going to use an internal IP address, but you're going to be using the external IP address you set up when you did your port forwarding. So I'll go ahead and put that in. And I'll call it uh, L2TP VPN. But you can call it anything you want. The only thing that's important is the internet address. It can be an IP address or it could be a name that you've assigned to that IP address. Go ahead and click Create. Now in Windows 7, it'll actually try to connect, so you can just choose the skip option. But we're just trying to create this. All right, so what's, that's all done. Let's click on Change Adapter Settings. And there is our L2TP VPN. And we're almost ready to test this out, but first we want to right click and go to Properties. And then we want to go to Options. And make sure remember my credentials in there, so that's good. Click on Security and change the type of VPN to L2TP. Click on Advanced Settings and click the pre Use Pre-Shared Key for authentication. And we want to choose the same password we've been using. And go ahead and click OK. Now we do want to change this next part here where it says Allow These Protocols. And make sure MS Chap is selected, which it is. So that's good. Now this next part is not necessary, but it can definitely help you out, and I'll tell you why. So go to your TCP IP version 4 settings and click on Properties under the Networking tab. And change your, use the following DNS to use the internal IP address, not external, but the internal IP address, get rid of that, of your uh, DC or whatever server you installed the L2TP on. So let's go ahead and put that in. And that'll help you do name resolution internally much better and much more quickly. We also want to uncheck the Use Default Gateway on Remote Network. What that does is it keeps any internet browsing separate from your browsing to the corporate network. So that way the corporate network doesn't realize what you've been browsing, which is probably good. Go ahead and click OK. Click OK. And we are done creating the client. And now we can test it out. So let's go to our L2TP VPN connection. Double click. And a new box pops up in Windows 10, although in Windows 7 it looks a little different. Windows 8 looks different as well. And you can go ahead and double click on the L2TP VPN and click on Connect. So there we go. It says that we're connected. You may get a pop-up box that asks for the username and password. The first time you type that, it will cache that information so you won't have to do it again. And the username is going to be your domain name backslash username. So in my case, it was widget backslash administrator. And uh, then you can go ahead and click Connect. So I tested the connection before. I just ran it here, so it cached my information. And I wanted to make sure it worked before I did it on video, of course. So now let's make sure that we actually are getting an IP address from our server. So let's right click on our start button and click on command prompt. And the command prompt, we're doing, going to do an IP config slash all. Hit enter. Now let's take a look and see our regular IP address on this computer we know is 192.168.15.10. However, because we are on an L2TP VPN as well, it gave us the IP address of 192.168.15.221. So we know that this is working. So you can do this from the outside of your network. As I mentioned, it works internally, of course, but as long as you port forward all the ports properly, as mentioned in the beginning, then this should all work for you from the outside, and you'll be able to be on your network. So Macintosh no longer allows PPTP VPN in the latest versions, so you're going to want to know how to set up this L2TP, and this is the pre-shared key version, which works just fine with Macintosh, and of course, any version of Windows from Windows XP on up.